check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Got a cool one for you here. We're going to do a test with some new Vextream PCBs version 1.0. PCBWay reached out to me to collaborate on this project. I got a discount on these PCBs from them. And these are ENIG PCBs, which is Electroless Nickel Immersion Gold Plated PCBs. These are actually plated with three micro inches of gold plating, uh, which is more than the standard one micro inch that you normally see. Um, I've got some other PCBs from JLC PCB that we're going to be pitting against these PCB way PCBs in a 36 pin edge connector, um, which is an amp connector same connector that you'll find in a Vectrex essentially uh, and I've got it rigidly mounted and we're just gonna cycle these PCBs over and over in this edge connector until we get to a thousand insertions and removals. We're gonna do this for the PCB way PCB, JLC PCB, another JLC PCB that's a hassle finish which is hot air solder leveled HASL. And we're going to also do this to an original Vectrex Berserk cartridge, which has hard gold plating. And you can tell it has hard gold because the little tracks that come out of the PCB fingers at the very top, those are added by the PCB manufacturer so that the board can be electroplated in a gold solution. So I'm just guessing that you don't want to actually sit here and watch me do this. So let's just skip right to the results. All right, I got 50 cycles done on the PCB way PCB. And I'm just going to let you observe what you see and not point out what I think I see because at this point in the test, I hadn't run all of the cycles and compared all the PCBs. So my viewpoint might have changed over time. So we're just going to kind of take a look now we're, we've got the JLC PCB here. This is also 50 cycles. All right, so here's the 100 cycles on the PCB way PCB. And I'm just going to show you the like the same side, the top side of each board just to kind of speed up this video. If I showed you the top and the bottom of every single board of every single run, it's just going to double the time, obviously. So let's keep things moving. Um, now here's the JLC PCB with 100 cycles. All right, now here's 250 cycles on PCB way. Now the 50, 100, and this 250 cycle board are all separate boards from the start, starting from you know the first cycle. But we're going to continue to keep using this 250 board going on to the next 500 and 1000 cycles just because i really don't want to get into a recursive problem where i start over at zero going for 500 or a thousand 250 cycles on jlc pcb All right, 500 for PCB way. Here we go. And let me ask you a question. Would you even play a dedicated Vectrex homebrew game 500 separate times where you're plugging it in, playing, and 
taking it out. Let me know in the comments below how many times you've played your favorite Vectrex game. Alright, here's 500 cycles for JLC PCB. How's that looking? What do we think? All right, so let's compare them side by side. We've got PCB way on the right, JLC PCB on the left. This is probably gonna be the best way to really tell one versus the other. See them both at the same time. And finally, 1,000 cycles on PCB way. And give yourself a pat on the back if you've made it to six minutes of watching PCB contacts. I don't know how you did it. How did I do it? We've got 10 more minutes somehow. Oh, but it gets way more interesting coming up. Just wait. And also, 1,000 cycles on JLC PCB. And we might as well do one final side-by-side -side comparison with JLC PCB on the left, PCB way on the right. I don't know about you guys, but this is a thousand cycles on a homebrew video game cartridge. That looks pretty good for both of these boards. Really, really decent quality. And here, a final flip to the backside. I mean, if I'm being honest, I thought for sure these boards would wear down in the copper by then. But surprisingly, it doesn't look like they've worn much past uh, the nickel layer that's under the outer gold layer. So there's gold, nickel, heavy plate of nickel, and then copper under there. Alright, so up next is 250 cycles of Berserk's hard gold PCB. Now the contacts on these older PCBs do kind of look a little rough, not super smooth. That's not due to any insertion. Yeah, I'm not really sure why they look like dinosaur skin. If you know, please leave a comment below. All right, and we have 500 cycles for Berserk Heart Gold PCB. Let me know if you see any difference between 250 and 500. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can really get a close up look at that dinosaur skin. Just really got a nice fossilized green to it. But as you can see, not really that much wear, um, other than just kind of shining up the contacts. So here I'm trying to figure out if there's wear or if that's just dirt. So I'm taking an acid brush and I'm just gently brushing to see what that difference is between the shiny left side and the right side. And as you can see, 
it kind of just looked like maybe a buildup of some dirt or dust or scrapings. Alright, and finally, 1,000 cycles on Berserk Hard Gold PCB. Now, as you can see, this contact does look like we're seeing copper. And that's sad, because I really would have thought the hard gold would have lasted the longest out of all these PCBs. Um, but this is hard gold from 1982, so I don't know really how thick they plated it back then. Um, I wish I could test hard gold from a PCB manufacturer today, but really kind of just too expensive um, but I think the Berserk cartridge did exceptional for being almost 40 years old surviving a thousand cycles through that connector and it doesn't look too bad Alright, and here we've got 50 cycles of our JLC PCB hassle board. Hot air solder leveled. Let's see what just 50 cycles looks like. Alright, let's take a look at 100 cycles of the JLC PCB hassle board. Okay, now we're looking at 250 cycles of the JLC PCB hassle board. Five hundred cycles now, JLC PCB hassle. Let's see what we find. Oh, we're seeing some copper now. Copper wear through definitely on most tracks. And finally, our last board, one thousand cycles for the JLC PCB board. What do we have? Oof. That looks terrible. I mean, not only does it look bad, I honestly wouldn't want to put that in my Vectrex. Oof, goodbye. That trace is gone. That is all the way through the copper down to the fiberglass. You can clearly see it right in the middle there. Just wasted. And this is what you get after a thousand cycles. Just completely wears through, hassled through the copper down to the PCB. And over time, Outside of your Vectrex, this is going to oxidize and it's not going to make good contact. This PCB won't function. All right, I just looked up the data sheet for this part and what it says is 
what we're looking at here is um, 30 micro inches of gold plate on these pins and uh, there's also underneath that there's a 50 micro inch of nickel plating um, and then the, the contacts down here I think it says there's 100 micro inches of tin matte tin so presumably that's better for soldering this is better for contact wear and then just nickel underneath um, for conductivity and to be able to plate these two different metals um, to what's likely a, a copper brass alloy pin or something like that. Um, I don't see any sort of like cycle rating on these. Um, so, you know, your mileage may vary there, who knows, uh, but at least they tell you what the finish is, which is nice. Well, okay, that about wraps it up for this video. Let me know what you thought about the test. Would you buy ENIG boards? Would you buy Hassle boards? Have you purchased hard gold and was it worth it? Let me know what you think in the comments and stay tuned for Vextreme build video. 1.0